Hi, it's BK here from BK Gold Detecting and welcome to a new series. I know it's been a while since I've uh, posted anything, but uh, you know, life's been busy. But this new series I'm gonna call Let's Talk About Gold Detecting. And each video I'll concentrate on a particular aspect of uh, prospecting. And today's video is gonna be about working the mullock heaps in a gully. Now, I know it's been a while. Eliza and I have had a, a busy year. We've had grandchildren, we've had holidays, all sorts, but we're back into the prospecting now. And uh, wow, off to a good start. We got here yesterday and uh, I've been working the mullock heaps here and I've just picked up this beautiful three gram nugget. It's the dirtiest, ugliest looking nugget you've ever seen. It's covered in a layer of iron oxide, but uh, there's about, uh, well, I reckon about three or four grams of gold there, uh, straight in the red clay here. Now, during this video, I'm gonna walk you around a typical area where there's a, a mullock heap and uh, show you how I uh, approach this sort of an area. Now, I will tell you, this particular gully is in Inglewood and it was one of the richest gullies ever in the Australian gold fields. Um, it's not far from a famous mine and it's littered with mullock heaps here, which have been gone over thousands of times by different people. But hey, there's still gold here. And uh, if you come to an area like this, I guarantee if you uh, approach it the right way, you will find gold too. Okay, so let's talk about gold detecting. And in this video, we're talking about detecting the mullock heaps. Now I'm in Inglewood and I'm in a very famous gully here that was one of the richest um, gullies for alluvial gold in Victoria. Um, now, usually when you have a gully like this that's absolutely littered with mullock heaps, it's because further upstream, there's a very, very rich reef. And I know for a fact that just upstream from here was one of the richest reefs in Victoria. And uh, as a result, thousands of people flocked to this gully here to get all the alluvial gold that had, uh, you know, accumulated over millions of years. Literally thousands of ounces of gold were pulled out of here. But you know, these guys, they were working with picks and shovels. They didn't get everything. And there's little patches here and there where gold has been missed. But most of the gold that you find on the mullock heaps will be on the tops of the piles. Because remember, when they're digging a hole, what comes out the bottom of the hole ends up on the top of the mullock heap. So often you'll get very, very fine gold that has been missed by, by, the, uh, by the old timers uh, on the crests of the, of the heaps. And so that's a prime area to detect. Um, also, from time to time, you will get a bigger target. Like on the first day I was here, I got a three grammar, which is quite unusual on a mullock heap, but uh, not unheard of. So what we're gonna do today, we're gonna, Eliza and I are gonna go off in different directions. Eliza's gonna go back over towards where I got the three grammar, and she's gonna try on the tops of the mullock heaps there. And I'm gonna go a bit further in uh, and I'm going to try and find some deeper targets with my GPZ 7000. So uh, let's see how we go. So this gully, it goes for oh, it goes for miles. It's absolutely littered with mullock heaps. Look, as far as you can see, there's mullock heaps. But you know, it is worth going over those mullock heaps, and you will pick up little pieces, occasionally bigger pieces. But my favourite location, by far, is where I just found this three grammar over here. What I like to do, my favourite spot is along the edges of the mullock heaps. You know, you've got the mullock heaps coming through here, and then all of a sudden, you've got a flat on the edge of it with no mullock heaps. I love working along the edges of these because it wouldn't have been the richest place for the old timers. They were in the, in the deep part of the gully looking for you know where the concentrated gold was. So along the edges, often you get little forgotten pockets that uh, haven't been detected before. So uh, yeah, that, that, that's my first choice when I do the mullock heaps. But look, we will have a bit of a play on the top of the mullock heaps further in. 
and I'll show you the techniques that I use there. It's important that you don't sweep too fast with your detector. Keep your coil very, very close to the ground and overlap your swings. And working on these sort of mullock heaps, you're not going to get many booming targets. They were gone years ago. You're listening for very, very subtle sounds, just slight changes of frequency. Anything that just sounds a little bit different, give the ground a scrape. You know, when you're detecting, don't be afraid to experiment with the different settings on your detector. Now, most detectors will have different modes. There might be one for noisy ground and one for quiet ground. Um, look, all detectors are different, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. But on, on my machine here, if I go into the, uh, the mode that goes deep, but isn't so good at discriminating ground noise, I'll often pick up a signal that I won't get on the, uh, you know, on the other settings. I'll give you a good example here. Now you have to listen carefully, this is a very, very subtle signal. Now I'm just picking up a signal there, but I'm in the very, very sensitive mode, which is normally used on very deep, quiet ground. I'll put it back to the mode that most people would use in the gold fields, which is very good at discriminating against ironstone. And I can't pick up any, any signal there, nothing that would actually pull me up. So, you know, you really do need to experiment with the settings. We'll give this a bit of a scrape and we'll see if there's anything there. Well, I can still hear something there, so I dig a bit deeper. Could just be ground noise, but you know, from time to time, you'll pick up that nugget in the deep mode that you just won't normally get. Well, let's see if it's got any louder. I can still hear it. Now, the fact that that's a repeatable sharp sound is quite promising. If that was ground noise by now, it would be starting to, uh, starting to diminish a bit. We'll give it a bit more. Now, the interesting thing is, we'll put it back, we'll take it out of the sensitive setting, and we'll put it back on the, uh, on the uh, difficult ground setting where we couldn't hear anything before, and let's see if we can hear it now. Yep, we're picking it up. This is very promising. At ground level, there's no, no detection at all on this setting. Oh, it's out of the hole. Definitely hear it now. Well, whatever it is, it's on the plate. Oh. 
Here we go. Whoa-hoo! A lovely flat little piece of gold here. Look at that. Now, if I hadn't have experimented with the settings, I probably wouldn't have this now. Another one in the container. Now, I'm getting some uh, calls from Eliza, who's not far away. Hi. Okay, what have you found? Let's have a look. How small is it? Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Where did you get it? Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. This is, we're right in amongst the uh, mullock heaps here. And right next to this tree here. Well done, honey. Really good. There you go. Well, you're off the mark. Looks like it's going to be uh, a good day. Now, where did I find my nugget? Just over there. Didn't take you long to sneak back with a 6,000. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it must be just about time for some uh, lunch. And then we'll get back into it. Well done. Thank you. There you go. Well, Eliza's back. It's time for some lunch. And have we got a yummy lunch lined up. You know, it's not just about the gold. Eliza and I love being on the gold fields, camping out, and every now and again, having ourselves a nice treat. Have a look at this, we've got ourselves a piece of pork in here. Hopefully it's cooked. Let's have a look. It's been in there for about an hour and a half. Oh, look at that. Look at those veggies. Nice bit of pork, yum. You know, there's one thing I've learned over the years. Don't go too hard at it. You know, you have a lot more success at prospecting if, uh, you know, take your time, have plenty of breaks, eat well. And then when you do go out there, you've got the energy and the concentration to, uh, you know, really be successful. Oh, well, Eliza's got another signal right on the top of the mullock heaps, as I was saying. And it's a beautiful signal. The 6,000 usually has a really sharp response. Well, it's out of the hole. The only thing is it's very loose ground. So hopefully, well, something there. Let's hope it's gold. Well, you know, a bit disappointing. We are working the mullet heaps, tiny little brass ring of some sort, but I thought the ground was a little bit loose now. You know, you have to get used to these disappointments when you're working the mullet heaps. Well, it's, it's about 7.30 in the morning and it's very, very cold, but Eliza was determined to get out early today. And look, we only just started walking out. She's got a signal already down here, so, uh, Keep our fingers crossed that this one's not junk. Do you see anything? No. It's a junk. Sorry. Ah, uh, well, one thing, you know, never get disappointed when you pull a lead shot out of a mullock heap because that was buried in the ground. People have been over here before and if they've missed that lead shot, they've definitely missed gold. So, uh, you know, it's, that gives me encouragement that this area hasn't been thoroughly done. Well, Eliza's gone back for a break, so I'm having a bit of a go with the uh, GPX 6000. And I've had three targets so far. The first two were lead shots, right close to where Eliza got the other four targets. I'm just about maybe five meters further over on another mullock heap here. And I'm getting another target, which was very quiet at first, but I've dug down a bit. Starting to sound quite good. And another target here.
this one's in quite hard clay. I just got the battery warning on the GPX. Let's hope it lasts. Wow, still there, and I'm at and still at the surface level. It's picking it up from uh, quite a quite a depth because I was above the ground there. Come on. She's out. Let's see what we got. Well, whatever it is, it's in this little lump of clay here. Oh, you beauty. Oh, the text is just about to die on me. Right in the middle of that piece of clay. Wow. That's only about less than two meters from where Eliza got the last one. Oh, it's a lovely bit too. Nice prickly piece of gold there. Have a look at this. Look at that. Lovely. Not huge, but wow, loving it. Oh, I think I might have to get one of these 6,000s. That was quite deep in the clay there. Well, back at camp and I'm happy. Look, it's not the biggest nugget in the world, but uh, that's six for this morning between us. Couldn't be happier, plus what we got yesterday. Look, it really is worth going over those old mullock heaps. You know, you think that they're close to town, or they've been done a thousand times, but you know, you just gotta look at the amount of lead shot you find. Every piece of lead shot is a potential piece of gold. And uh, to be honest with you, on this trip, it's been about three to one, three lead shots for every piece of gold. And that's actually not a bad average. Eliza, what have you found? Well, you're not going to like it. What? If you come here, I'll show you. Oh, this is actually quite close to where I got the, uh, the three grammar. Look, you have your, your dick there. And your dick here, and your three grandma is there, here, right? Yeah, how about you take your headphones off yeah. so that people can hear, and you let me listen to those targets you've got, and then I'll go over with my 7,000. There's your three grandma. Okay. Did you hear it? Yep, yeah. come and show me the other ones. Hmm. Actually, to be honest with you, that's the most promising one. Which one? That one? <laughs> Not screaming, but sounding a bit deeper. Okay, how about you turn your machine off and I'll try with the uh, 7000. that loud. I, I can hear a signal but not that loud. Now that would have pulled me up. I would definitely have heard that. I'm getting a very quiet signal there. Just not as loud.
Nothing on that one. Okay, back to the 6,000. Wow, that's a much sharper signal than the 7,000 gave me. Look at that. Wow. I want one of these. <laughs> okay. Back to you. Well, there's four targets here. One of them's got to be gold, surely. Very, very quiet target. Oh, gee. Tiniest gold ever. Wow, it's gold? Yeah. Great. Wow. Very good. Oh, no wonder it was so far, hard to find. Look at that. Tiny, tiny little piece. But wow, I am like really impressed. That's where I got my three grammar. Hey, well done. You happy? <laughs> <laughs> Put it in your hand so I can see it better. Well, you can't see Kevin. Yeah. It's too small. Yeah, let's have a look. Wow. You know, every, every detector has its good points. I love my 7000, but you know, no way was it going to pick up that target. That was very, very small, tiny piece, you know, down a bit. And uh, the 6000, well, it is exceptional at picking up those small pieces of gold close to the surface. Maybe not as good at the deep targets as the 7000, but uh, wow, this is a perfect machine for the muller keeps, I tell you. Well, out of the four targets, one rubbish, one tiny piece of gold. We've moved on to the third one now. It's a lead shot, I think. There you go. Rubbish. Rubbish. Lead shot. Oh well, one out of three. Still one hole to go. Could this be two nuggets from four targets? Oh, out of the hole. Sounding good. Wow, this is a beauty. Is it gold? Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Oh, wow. Look at this. Wait, wait. Wait a minute. Where is it gone? Let's have a look. Look at that. Zoom in a bit. Oh, beautiful little piece of gold there. Nice and deep in the mullock heap. Well done, honey. You gotta be happy Very with that. Happy. Well, there you go. Four targets all close together, right along this ridge here on this mullock heap two golds and two rubbish right next to where I got the three grammar okay in the container give it a rattle <laughs> well done well it's almost time to go home one last swing and I'm back to the same area we've actually picked up six nuggets in a very small area here and uh, I've only been back here maybe 10 minutes and I'm getting another target here in some very, very hard clay, just like the last one. Not very loud at the moment, but that could be a good thing. It's a definite target. This is very hard ground here, just like the last one. Very solid clay. I love it when you get a target in, uh, in the red clay. 
Red clay holds gold. It's very, very dense. The gold can't sink in it. It's almost like bedrock. Well, it's out. Let's see how we go. Well, it's in this piece of clay here. Let's see if we've got something. I'm quite hopeful. Let's have a look. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Look at that. A lovely little piece of gold right inside that red clay. And only probably two meters from the last nugget. Shame we're going home. This area needs to be gone right over. Um, the last one was just by the pick there. This one's here and we've got six more just off this one little area. Now, if you remember, at the beginning of the video, I told you how I love to detect on the edge of the mullet keeps. Well, there's mullet keeps all the way through there. This is the edge of them where it goes off into the flat. I find these to be very productive areas. You know, it wasn't rich enough for the old timers to dig this up. They were in the gully down there where the rich stuff was. This stuff here, great for detectors, but not much good for pick and shovel. Very happy. You know, I can't stress enough um, how much I like the red clay. I mean, these mullock heaps, they're piled up on top of that red clay. They were digging down to that red clay to find the gold. Here on the edge, of the mullet heaps where it first levels out onto flat ground, you've still got the original red clay layer. Well, just a quick weigh in before we pack up. Um, look, I'm really happy with this, just under five grams in uh, not much more than one and a half days detecting uh, near Inglewood on the mullet heaps or close to the mullet heaps. We're very happy with this.